Another of your recommendations was improved compliance um, with DBS checking, which, you know, again, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. But did you make any assessment of the weaknesses of, of DBS checks and the loopholes that mm. are present within the system? We did. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Brown will uh, yeah. speak about this. Uh, yes, we did. So um, let's d let's deal with dom domestically first. So one of the big weaknesses is that there is already a duty that where a professional body, General Medical Council, for example, um, opens an investigation into an individual that they are responsible for, there is a requirement to to let the DBS know that so they can be taken into account okay. with other information that might already be held by the DBS okay. uh, in in that person's disclosure and it isn't just whether that information is disclosed because of course the barring function of the DBS doesn't always rely on one piece of information sometimes the bar <laughs> is made because of the culmination of information okay. rather than just a single and that might not be actual criminal convictions it might not be convictions okay. um, but if that information from the particular body concerned general Audit council I'm just picking them as an example isn't forwarded then it can't be taken into account so there is quite a weakness there if you know, if we go right back to Holly and Jessica, the whole point of that is you need to have the totality of the totality of the information in order to make the right decision about whether somebody is suitable to work with children or vulnerable adults. Mm. And if you don't get the information, you're not necessarily going to be making the right decision. And did you consider, I don't know if you've seen uh, in the news recently, Sarah Champion, MP for Rotherham, is pushing for an end to this loophole where if you change your name, mm -hmm. um, you can essentially, uh, you know, erase your criminal history. It's also the case if you change your gender. You erase your. What did you consider making recommendations along tightening up uh, the process as well as just improving compliance? So, uh, I don't think the panel did that specifically. I mean, it is already a requirement that you, on your DBS check, you put all the names you've been known by, and obviously, when the DBS run their check against police systems, any systems against a name that's given that show an alias, that the police will automatically already include would include that information in what they send to the DBS, if that makes sense. So if they apply under the name Joe Bloggs, and when they send Joe Bloggs' details to the police, they say Joe Bloggs is also known as these five names, they will package all of that information up and send but it. But I don't think the school, let's say, gets to see those previous identities. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly the case with, with gender, because you can go down a kind of, uh, in, I can't remember the name of it, but enhanced privacy, where, you know, let's say you're a man, you've changed your gender to, to a woman, self-ID, no gender recognition certificate required, you can, the school may never know and wouldn't be allowed to ask you if you were previously a man. Do you think that's a loophole and, and, and actually something that somebody who's predatory might seek to exploit? It's not a matter that we yes, considered uh, in any, any indeed at all in relation to the work of the inquiry because it, it's it's more recently that this yes, has emerged. Yes, yes, of course. And yeah. we were we were very much concerned with the evidence that was 